Welcome to the tutorial video for the Johnson Controls Feature Quick Quote Takeoff Tool with IDNAC point-to-point -point integration. The new tool is designed to facilitate rapid takeoff and estimating using spreadsheet functionality for interface with the selection navigator and CPQ pricing platforms. Key features include fast and simple device selection spreadsheet, a dedicated selector screens for IDNet, IDNAC, conventional NAC, third-party items, and the 4007 series. It has an integrated labor calculator. It encompasses the IDNAC point-to-point -point circuit designer, a bill of materials view with a selection filter, the ability to import CSV files from takeoff tools such as Bluebeam, and the ability to export a CSV file for online pricing tools such as Selection Navigator and BSNA CPQ. Please note that Microsoft Excel is required to run the FQQ takeoff tool. When you open the worksheet, you will first need to enable content so the macros can run. And click Accept Agreement for the Warranty Disclaimer and Software License Agreement. There are two tools in this workbook, the circuit designer, which we cover in a separate video, and the FQQ, the feature quick quote takeoff tool. The purpose of the tool is to allow you to quickly create an, an estimate takeoff without going into your pricing tools, selection navigator or um, CPQ, and having to open up all the different filters and, and run down all of the lists. You can do that right here via the tabs. So the ID net is the first one. Everything in light blue can be edited to fit your purposes. So I can change the column header from floor one, two, or three to electrical drawing E101, E102, E103. I can set my spare capacity. So if I say I want 20% spare capacity headroom, you can only put 200 ID net devices on the 250 points before it takes you to a second loop. The center section has your totals. Then the bottom has all of our ID net devices laid out individually with their different uh, option configurations. So the smoke detector with standard base is here. That's both the smoke and the base. You don't have to go search for them separately. So if I tell it I need 25, it automatically populates at the top with 25 and that will fit on one ID net loop card. But let's say I go 225. Now it is Give me 225 addresses, but that has to fit on two ID net loops. As you scroll down the page, you'll see that we have the heat detectors with all the base options listed out, multi sensors, that's the photo uh, heat combos. Duct detectors have their individual, that's this is just a duct, this is a duct with the net LED, this is a duct with the test station with LED. Sampling tubes are below. The IMs, ZAMs, relay IMs, all have three ways. You have a straight IM with no, no trim plates. You have the semi-flush or the surface mount. If I choose this item, it automatically grabs my module with the trim plate. Down below are the IDNet isolator and power isolator modules. Pull stations are here. Uh, weatherproof pole station, when you choose this, this grabs a weatherproof pole with a encapsulated IM module to place behind it. Suppression releasing products are below, and then finally the uh, the ID NAC, ID net NAC extender panels and accessories are at the bottom. So let's move into the addressable ID NAC page. This is set up a little bit differently. Um, you have the 20% spare capacity, but I also have my average speaker wattage. So as I add speakers to it, it will keep a track of how many how many uh, watts do I need on my amps. This floor one, two, and three that I designated on the first page carries on to the next page as well. If I need something different, a different area, then I can override that by saying this is the first floor. Okay. It'll change it on just this page. So the center section, again, is our totals. They're all in white. I can't change them. The bottom are all the things that I can modify. Different than the IDNet page is the, uh, is the devices. So the IDNet, we listed everything out 
with all of their different piece and parts that you use on every single job that has addressable notification. When you get to the notification ID NAC, you might be doing a, system, a voice system that has all speakers on it, so you don't need any horn strokes or vice versa. You can set this sheet up to your liking, to your parameters. You can say, I'm a contractor that, uh, that does mostly voice systems and I can put speakers as my options here. You can save this sheet as your template and you might have two sheets. You might have a voice evac template and a non-voice template. So it opens up and your items are at the top. As you choose these items, if I put in 55 of these speakers, up top it gives me the quantity. I have 55 speakers, 50, 50, 55 unit loads. There's my, uh, my amps required for the strobes and there's my wattage requirement. Down in these boxes, we give you some more information. How many ID NACs with, uh, that I need without using repeaters? It would be two. If I'm going to use with repeaters, I can say I need one ID NAC and I need one repeater. So let's move on to conventional NAC. It's done the same way. Spare capacity, your watt uh, requirements, but instead of having addressable devices, we have conventional NAC devices. And you also can change these to choose your favorite type of items. The next tab has third party items. And these are things that you might put in uh, in your your day to day business that you don't purchase from John's controls. We could have labor costs and we've set in some some pre populated numbers that you can change these. You can say, well, we carry seven hundred and fifty dollars worth of permitting costs typically. And there are X amount of hours. You know, there are four hours required for that. Because I change it here doesn't mean I've actually chosen them. To choose those items, you have to come over here and say, well, I have one permit for this particular project, and it will populate. Next column down has subcontractor costs. If you have to pay an electrician to do, to run conduit for you, provide power for your panels. And then custom third party items at the bottom, you might have wire, FPLP, um, thousand foot rolls cost me $200, whatever it is, and put those in here and you can uh, you can tally those as well. So let's move from the third party items into the panel configurators. In our selection navigator and CPQ platforms, you can go in and choose these pre-configured panels, the 4007 and the 10, by just choosing options. And you can put option cards in them, but they are off the shelf already built. The 4100 is a completely configured system, and that has to be built in selection navigator. To make things easier for you, though, since you are doing a fast takeoff, we have started with the 4007. We have three hybrid versions across the top, which are conventional NAC, and three addressable versions across the bottom. You can tailor these to your liking. You might say, well, one of the options that we use is we do a red hybrid conventional NAC panel. It doesn't need Buy America. It doesn't need this 48 LED enunciator, so I'll say no. Do I want any network cards with it? Do I want a DACT? Do I want batteries on it? So if I say no, I'm going to buy the batteries locally, I can say no here. Once you've set up your six panels, six different, six different flavors of panels, all you have to do is choose which ones you want for this particular quote. So I need two panels here. So let's move from here into the drawing import. So what this allows you to do is use programs such as Bluebeam to, um, to, to run your counts for you. Anyone who's familiar with Bluebeam realizes that it is a PDF takeoff tool that you set up in the back end to scan the page, look for certain symbols, um, pull station symbols, horn strip symbols, ceiling speaker strip symbols, and it will count them for you. And then they can it can create a uh, CSV output file. Well, you can bring that output file into here. What we've done, we have a we've mapped the smoke detector standard base phrase is actually a 9714 and a 9792 uh, detector base combo. That's our library that we provide. And that's over. If you scroll over to the right, that is our master library. So if you're just purchasing Bluebeam, for example, and you want to set up your library, you can use these master library phrases to uh, to copy and paste and put into your to match up with your Bluebeam, or if you already have your 
your custom blue bar, blue beam library set up, you can come in and say, well, what we use for a study using smoke detector with standard base, I can say, well, I've called it an addressable smoke. That's now, this is your library as you've created it. At the top, I just tell my sheet, where, where do I want to import, which library? Currently, if I say master, that's our library over here in the white, or I can say use the custom library that I've created. Now you'll see this top line is an addressable smoke. Now it still maps to the 9714 and the 9792. So finally, let's go to the import area. Where am I bringing it into? So if, I, if I'm setting this as column one, column two, column three, I can bring multiple downloads in, such as you know the E101 drawing, the E102, the E103. So let's bring a drawing in. If I import, I have a drawing that um, I've already created on my desktop. It is called Bluebeam Devices. If I open it, you'll see a box pop up and it tells me any errors that it found. It'll bring in everything that's there, but it also tell me these are things that we didn't find for some reason. Like for example, these strobe ceiling, these are IDNAC versions. We do not have a 75 candela. We have in the weatherproof version, we have the high candela, the 185 and the 135, I believe. So those weren't found. Doesn't mean that the, the DOM, the, uh, the import failed, it just didn't find all these items. So right away I have zero in this addressable smoke. Well, what's the reason for that? Because I told it to use my custom library. If I go back and I say master library and I do that import again, edit the import or import the drawing file, use the same file we did previously and I open it. Same error, I didn't find all these devices, but I did find 50 smoke detector standard bases. Next, let's move to the labor tab. So as you've made selections throughout the different screens, the, per, the tool is keeping track of labor for you. These items in blue, you can adjust, you can set your own labor estimates, what it will take to install a detector, what it will take to commission, what it will take to service um, that a detector, a duct detector, bases, all these individual items are for you to set up the first time. Once you've done that, it will keep track of it. Well, currently there are nothing, there's nothing that's populated because up in these, I haven't chosen where I'm going to bring that data in from. So if I go to the IDNAC designer, which we didn't cover here, but I did, I populate it with 30 multi-tone horns. So they are, there's the horn, the covers, and the plates. If I go to the quick, add just the quick quote, it will bring in those uh, 225 detectors, those 55 speakers, and I believe I had uh, some panels that you have 4,007 panels. If I uncheck that, again, I go back to zero, and then I have the file import that I brought in from Bluebeam. This tallied all these items, and at the bottom, I get quantity totals that I can use for my purposes of figuring my labor out. I can also use all of them, any combination. So if I choose everything, my, my totals go way up. So that's the labor portion. And now let's go to the bill of materials portion. It uses these same three selectors. What do I want to include in my BOM? If I uncheck it, we go back to a zero. If I go just to the file import, it spits out the quantity of devices. Anything that is not in the Johns Controls library, things that you would order from our company, will show with an asterisk down at the bottom, such as wire, for example. You're not buying that from us. So if I had five rolls of 1,000-foot FPLP wire, it would show it at the bottom, but it will not show it here to be in this B, or it will show in the BOM, but it won't be part of the CSV file that we're going to create to bring into our pricing tool. Because if you did, if you try to bring in a, a SKU or a PID or a pri, uh, part number that we don't recognize, it's it crashes the whole CSV import. So now let's move on from here to the create CSV file. 
So again, this is the end game for this whole project is let's grab all the items that we need, create this file. And when we do, a pop-up box will say, so where do you want to stick this file? This is a project bomb has today's date. You could rename it and say, this is the ABC warehouse. Save it. And then you'll go over to Selection Navigator or to CPQ and create that, bring that file in as an import. And pricing will be assigned. And it's much, the idea is for it to be much quicker than trying to go in and choose your panel, go to the um, initiating devices, find all those individually, choose them. The same for the notification devices. This is all about speed and estimating. If you win the project, then you go back and you can fine tune it and do your calculations and your um, your takeoffs or your submittals. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me cancel this and I'll show you where to find help. We go back to the home screen, help information. You can op you can contact me, Chuck Caudill, at this email and phone number. Jason Croucher is our sales program director. We, you can re also ask him for help. So thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day.